Hello, insomniac. I have a little confession to make. Most of these videos were originally done for my YouTube channel. Okay, so what? Well, I said it was a little confession. Here's the first video I recorded for YouTube. It was a test. You can tell. i 
letter of the Aramaic alphabet. I don't know. I'm a bird. Mockingbird, up in the tree. Mockingbird, won't you talk to me? Mockingbird, you fly the skies. Mockingbird, you must be wise. Here's a spoof of someone who really might know everything. Oldie and Mashy, the dimp and cold. Oldie and Mashy, the jokes are old. Soggy oatmeal the mashed potato. Try to act like the Socrates and Plato. They don't do much, but they talk for free. And that's the way. it, Mashy? Uh-oh. Now I'm confused. Confused? What about? Well, I'm supposed to be the one who says, what is it? Hey, that's right. Let's start over, only this time I'll take the opening line.
Just look at that. What is it, Odie? There, you feel better? Yep. That's because you're what they call the companion. Your job is to say stuff like, what is it, so I can be the smart one and tell all about it. Oh, okay. Good. Now let's get out of here. I'm bored already. Not so fast. Finally, a little conflict. Maybe we can get out of here slowly. You cannot escape my evil minions. What? There's nobody here. That's what you think. Oh, evil minions. Whatever happened to exterminate? My new crew has a limited vocabulary. Ha! I'm not afraid. Your guys can't even climb stairs. Neither can you. Uh-oh. Yeah, I think we got a problem. Let's try this. Stop! Wait! Come back! There they go. Oh, darn. That's what I get for hiring salad forks. Goodbye for now, but I will return. That was lucky. What? That was not luck, my dim-witted friend, but skill. I would never allow mere chance to allow me to escape certain peril. So what happened? I summoned the lettuce with my sonic crisper. How does it work? Pretty darn well, as you can see. My hero. What are you doing here? Why, I'm here to provide a romantic interest for Mashy. Plus, I'm much nicer to look at. We're saved! Now, hold on, Missy. What are you doing here? Are you going to provide a love interest for me? No, I just wanted to be on camera. Well, your screen test is over, honey. Now, look here. You can't honey me. I'm much too perky. This camera angle ain't big enough for the both of us, sister. We were better off with the forks. Let's get out of here. Okay. Are you coming, Gritsy? In a minute, sugar. Just as soon as I teach this little floozy a lesson. Oh, yeah? I'll teach you a lesson. Say good night, Gritsy. Never. Say it. I refuse. Come on, Mashy. Let's go. Your mother was mush, and your father was a stalker. You should know, honey. You were there before I was even born. Oh! What is it, Odie? That's more like it. Hey, we're receiving a transmission. Please confirm receipt of incoming signal. Okay, we can hear you loud and clear. I just wanted to let you know how disappointed I was by that last scene. It was loud and hackneyed and not at all British. Yeah, that's what happens when you try to jazz things up by putting in a cat fight. Especially without any cats. Don't worry, it won't happen again. I shouldn't think so. Not with the number of views you're likely to get. Okay, thanks for the message. Over and out. Over and out? Already? Yeah, we're doing this old style. Short episodes. Shouldn't we end with some suspense? Look out, Odie! It's the guy with the spoon! He's gone, but maybe he'll regenerate. Home again.
It's time to join our time traveler on a trip back to 1989. cheese in France. I don't know. I'm a bird. Mockingbird, up in the tree. Mockingbird, won't you talk to me? Mockingbird, you fly the skies. Mockingbird, you must be wise. Speaking of 
Speaking of irrelevant, here's this.
Mockingbird. Hello. Mockingbird, who invented the bicycle? I don't know. I'm a bird. Mockingbird, up in the tree. Mockingbird, won't you talk to me? Mockingbird, you fly the skies. Mockingbird, you must be wise. I don't know about the guy who invented the bike, but here's a guy you don't want to be. This here song's a song about a girl who went away, she's so insensitive. She said she had to leave me, but I wanted her to stay, she's so insensitive. She said I'm too controlling. But I don't believe it's true It's not my fault she doesn't do The things I want her to She doesn't see how her decisions Undercut my power That I'm the master gardener And she's a stupid flower She's so insensitive Time for a little late-night horror, or something. Oh dear Mashy, the dim and cold. Oh dear Mashy, the jokes are old. Soggy oatmeal and mashed potato. Try to act like the Socrates and Plato. They don't do much, but they talk for free. And that's the way. Hello again, and welcome to Oti and Mashi. Tonight's episode is a fable, but it is a fable of gothic horror. Hey 
Hey, Mashy. What is it, Odie? I've been pondering deeply. Uh Uh-oh. What? Why do you say, uh uh-oh? We get into enough trouble when you've just been thinking. Well, I've been pondering deep humanitarian concerns about the continued well-being of my fellow oats. I got a problem with that statement, but I can't put my finger on it. Why not? I got no fingers. Not to mention your lack of an adequate vocabulary. Yep. Be that as it may, I believe that I have come up with a solution to a problem that has plagued oat kind for as long as I can remember. Um... Aren't you going to ask me what it is? I don't know what to ask about. What do you mean? Do I ask about the solution or the problem? Yeah, good point. Tell you what, start by asking me about the problem. Okay. Now? Yeah, go for it boldly. Okay. What is it, Odie? The problem is that I keep getting eaten by the guy with the spoon. Oh, that problem. Exactly. Now you can ask me about the solution. Okay. What is it, Odie? Well said, my exposition-enabling friend. Odie? Now I was pondering how this continuing catastrophe of cutlery could be prevented. Odie? What? What is it now? How come you're talking funny? My lofty, high-toned speech is due to the fact that, for this episode, I have become a man of science. Oh, okay. Can you give me some legs? Legs? Whatever for? So I can run away now before it's too late? There's no time for that. Let me get to the description of my solution. Um... Odie? And before you speak again, let me just say that, one, the dictionary definition of cutlery does indeed include spoons as well as knives and forks, and two, my uses of the terms humanitarian and man of science are merely colloquial, so you can spare me your simple-minded, literalistic interruptions. Oh, okay. Now. My solution will be to create a super spoon with the divine spark of oat consciousness via surgical means. Yes, I will imbue my creation with oat-like compassion so that this mightiest of all spoons will no longer attack, but will actually defend the safety and security of myself, of my brother oats, yea, of all those who dwell in these humble bowls. But how are you going to make a spoon think like an oat? Ah, yes, that is the crux of the matter. I will surgically implant the spoon with the grain of an oat, and you shall assist me. How? By not getting in the way, and by occasionally asking the appropriate dumb questions. Yes, master. Oh, no, you don't. You stay in character. I need dumb questions, not blind obedience. But where are you going to get the grain? You're using all yours. I'm glad you asked me that. Thanks, Odie. That's Dr. Odie for this episode. I have cunningly obtained a genuine oat grain and preserved it in this vat. What's that funny-smelling liquid inside? Oh, it's a simple solution commonly used in this sort of undertaking. A 99% suspension of disbelief. So what happens now? Let's start with a montage to show the construction of the super spoon.
Now I shall drop in the single grain of oat consciousness, and my creation will come to life. Uh-oh. What happens now? We wait for it to stir. I have no choice now but to destroy my creation. How are you going to do that? My fail-safe guidance system. close. Oh, all is lost. The shame, the humiliation. My experiment has come to an ignominious end. But I've learned my lesson. What is it, Odie? That for all their marbles, scientific solutions cannot safeguard against the forces of human behavior. Gee, Odie, that actually made sense. Maybe, but my lesson has come too late. I shall be forever shunned, a disgrace, an outcast, a pariah. No one will want to deal with me now. Who is it, Odie? I can't bear to look. Anyway, you should go see. You're the assistant. Good thing they're letting themselves in. Ah, Dr. Frankenspoon. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Count Spatula. Odie and Bashi, the shows are lame. Odie and Bashi, they're all the same. Odie's answer and Mashi's question guaranteed to give you indigestion. They don't do much, but they talk for free. the title of the next song? I don't know. I'm a bird. Mockingbird, up in the tree. Mockingbird, won't you talk to me? Mockingbird, you fly the skies. Mockingbird, you must be one. Your rage. 
your thoughts just sail away today Sweet Virginia And take the time to rest your mind And drift along the peaceful streams and dreams Sweet Virginia While all your cares get left behind It's not your hopes that run So much for fantasy. Let's get back to the real world. Odie and Mashie, the damp and cold. Odie and Mashie, the jokes are old. Soggy oatmeal and mashed potato. Try to act like the Socrates and Plato. They don't do much, but they talk for free. And that's the way. Welcome to episode 26 of Oti and Mashi. Today's episode is about a small, family-owned business. The principles are colorful enough, but they also get an interesting and diverse group of customers, not to mention some fascinating odds and ends and bric-a-brac. So without further ado, let's get on with our new show, Pawn Shop. That's it? Pawn Shop? That's not much of a title. Yeah, where's the creativity? Where's the imagination? Well, you must remember that this is reality television. Oh, yeah. Hello, I run a store. I get help from my son, Sprout, and my father, Big Boss. Gritzy helps out in the back office, and Mashie here is no help at all. Together, we run the pawn shop. Aren't you going to fold your arms? Shut up, Mashy. All right, everyone, let's keep it friendly. We got a customer. Well, well, look who's here. Me. Yeah, and there's Odie, Sprout, Big Boss, Gritzy. Oh, yeah, and me. I'm no help at all. Shut up, Mashy. Never mind that. What can we do for you today, sir? Well, I've brought in something I'd like to pawn. Okay, what is it? My grandmother. It figures. I heard that. What's going on here? You can't just put a value on her. Well, actually, we've got an expert who's been doing that kind of thing for years. Call the Pickle Palace. No, you call. That guy gives me the creeps. Let me call, Dad. No, you're too young. You gotta be 18 or older. Hey, look who just came in. Well, speak of the pickle. It's our old friend, Mr. Q. Cumber. What brings you here? I'm just cruising, looking for new talent, as always. As long as you're here, can you do us a favor? Mr. Fork here has brought in his grandmother and we need an appraisal. Sure, happy to oblige. Let's take a look at the old girl. She looks like she was pilfered from the Bates Motel. Hmm. Well, she's been around a while, and her tines are false. Posture's still good, though. Say, wait a minute. Do I know you, miss? I doubt it. She's been in the fruit cellar for 40 years. 
No, there's no doubt about it. I featured her in issue 24 all those years ago. Those were some fine times. Yeah, but those are long gone. Is she worth anything today? Come on, there's bound to be some sentimental value. Not likely. Look at all the sentiment you've got. No, he has a point. Three to be exact. First, she's an antique. Second, someone's bound to have an old copy of my issue 24. Third, there are museums that might be interested. Yeah? So how much can I get for her? Oh, for the right bidder, she might fetch as much as a hundred dollars. Not bad. Okay, thanks, Q. So we have a deal? Not so fast. Q's appraisal is for an end buyer. I gotta factor in stuff like shelf space, cleanup, overhead, underhand, you know the routine. Tell you what, I'll give you a buck and a quarter. Sold. Okay, Sprout, write him up. It looks like we got another customer. Hello, everyone. Well, if it isn't our favorite walk-on, Kristen Bell Pepper, what have you brought us today? Oh, nothing. I just wanted to be on camera again. Hey, Odie. Shut up, Mashie. Slow down, boss. Remember, we gotta make friendly for the customers. Uh, what's your question, Mashie? Are we really gonna buy Grandma Fork for a buck and a quarter and then sell her for a hundred? Isn't that kind of high? One more crack out of you, Mashie, and your history. Hey, we're all history here. Hey, Kristen, do you think I could get made every day? In your dreams? Uh-oh, I've got to go. I think someone else just came in. What's the rush? He's a stalker. Hi, everybody. I got something I'd like to sell. Well, bring it over here and let's take a look at it. Okay, here it is. I found that one myself. What, are you crazy? You couldn't even give that gag away. What kind of shop do you think we're running here? Son, how many times do I have to tell you? You can't end a show on a question. Really? Odie and Mashie, the shows are lame. Odie and Mashie, they're all the same. Odie's answer and Mashie's question Guaranteed to give you indigestion. They don't do much, but they talk for free. Well, we shouldn't expect too much reality from reality television. After all, it's more like a TV dream. I had a dream last night. I was living in a modern TV sitcom and all the jokes made sense to me. But I was just a cough on the audience track So what's the point? What do you mean? What's the point? It's television, man It was a TV dream I had another dream Last night, I was living in a modern TV crime show And I was the guy who was just off screen Who nobody ever sees or hears So who would know? What do you mean? Who would know? It's television, man It was a TV dream sensation of premonition but I couldn't understand it cause it's high definition okay, so you can just de define high definition
I had one last dream last night. I was living inside a commercial for insurance. I was a CGI. I was never so appealing in real life. Real life. What do you mean? Real life. It's television, man. It was a TV. 